Well, I mean, with Ram here, Ram in the sense, Mr. Jetmalani, it's always a, even when he says nothing, he's a, he's a symbol of provocation. So, <laughs> which is very healthy in our, in our country. And, and uh, in, uh, in his presence here, and of course, Mr. Pachauri, and my good friend Minar, um, and who's uh, trying his best to make sure that this uh, MDGs are achieved by the time we all set ourselves to do. But let me begin. There is a written text which is being circulated, I'm sure, but uh, I, do, yeah, I do not uh, wish to read that out. I just want to uh, set some questions uh, before all of us, which I think are important in achieving these goals. First of all, I think there's very little uh, debate or even dispute over the fact that these are goals that need to be achieved. I mean, there's absolutely no sense in talking about the need to achieve these goals, and I think uh, all the heads of state that got together 10 years ago, I mean, they made certain extremely good uh, statements. Um, and I would uh, like to confine myself to the issue of poverty today. And when they talked about, uh, I mean, I quote, in fact, this is the declaration they said, we will spare no effort to free our fellow men, women, and children from the abject and dehumanizing conditions of extreme poverty, to which more than a billion of them are currently subjected, unquote. Now, we want to make... Uh, Poverty as uh, making poverty history was the objective of the MDGs. But when, they, uh, under, when this goal was undertaken, I think unfortunately the world was better placed than we are placed today. Following the global uh, recession that has started a couple of years ago and the meltdown that you have, the task of achieving the elimination of poverty has become more necessary on the one hand and more challenging on the other. And it's more challenging in the sense that uh, uh, the United Nations Development Program has uh, recently put out that, uh, I quote, newly updated estimates from the World Bank suggest that the global economic crisis will leave an additional 50 million people in extreme poverty in 2009 and some 64 million by the end of 2010, relative to a non-crisis scenario, principally in sub-Saharan Africa, Eastern and Southeastern Asia. Moreover, the effects of the crisis are likely to persist. Poverty rates will be slightly higher in 2015 and even beyond to 2020 than they would have been had the world economy grown steadily at its pre-crisis pace." Unquote. So what we have is a situation where it is very different from what it was 10 years ago. Even 10 years ago, elimination of poverty appeared a very distant uh, uh, challenge. But now it, it is appearing more distant. Now, are we in a position to achieve this target as far as we are concerned in India, let's say? I'm not talking globally, but when we are talking of India. And uh, mandated by the United Nations, all governments of the world had undertaken their midterm reviews. India had undertaken one in 2009. And, uh, and that review had put out, uh, you know, a lot of... Uh, statistics, a lot of achievements that we are supposed to have, uh, I mean, milestones we are supposed to have reached. But more or less, final, the final uh, conclusion that that review comes to is that India is on track of fast by one main indicator, but slow by another main indicator. In, in other words, we have tried to balance out, saying in one indicator we are a little ahead, in another indicator we are a little behind, but more or less we are not really changed much. Now, if this is the situation, it appears now that we are going to have a very serious task before us in terms of eliminating poverty. There's one basic uh, problem uh, that we have is on the definition of poverty itself. In India, we have a very serious problem, a conceptual problem, a problem we do not want to admit on defining poverty. Our poverty is defined in terms of was defined in terms of a calorific intake. That is, if an individual had a certain calorie intake, if he exceeded that calorie intake, he was not poor. So our poverty estimates are not connected with any other thing regarding livelihood or life. It was only about your nutritional intake. That in itself is a very, very serious uh, lacuna in the sense that you cannot define poverty only in terms of your nutritional intake, which is, of course, the most important, but that is not all. But even taking that for granted, the estimates vary very, very, very widely. 
now you have after the dispute in the uh, in the planning commission and you have now come to uh, a conclusion on the basis of a, a report uh, presented by Suresh Tendulkar that you have a poverty rate of 37.2 percent. Now many of us who are associated with uh, India in the sense of uh, various uh, campaigns that we are associated with, we feel that this is a gross underestimation in terms of actual life that you see for yourself. There's another commission which is reported, which is appointed ironically by the Prime Minister, which, uh, which, was, uh, which has reported that 77 percent of Indian people live on less than 20 rupees a day. Now, these are all official figures. So given this uh, wide divergence in the official figures, the estimates that you make, the, the absolute uh, numerical estimates that you make, sometimes makes uh, little sense in the sense that are we really halving our number of people that are poor? How much have we achieved in terms of reducing poverty? These are matters that will be subjected to considerable debate and very intense debate, animated debate in, in the country. But even after 10 years of this uh, MDG's uh, objective being in, what is the actual reality in our country? And I think that is something which the official report itself says, and I want to go, to, go, to go through that, because I think that is really very, very revealing. Now, let, us, let me make one, uh, one point very clear here. This is not an occasion where we are scoring political points. I mean, I'm not here saying that this is what the government is doing wrong. I'm in the opposition, therefore, I think, you know, they have to be condemned. That's not the issue. The issue is, as uh, Indians, as human beings, You've just heard some questions about uh, what Ram had said. That's why I said he was very provocative, in the sense that uh, you're talking about numbers of people. Now, there are two ways of looking at it. One is our population is a liability. You cut down on numbers. The other is look at it, our population is an asset. Turn it into an asset. Give them education, give them health, give them employment. And that is what is going to create a better India. Now, I mean, how do you look at it? I mean, I mean that is where the, the, where the dispute comes. Now, do we have the resources to treat it as an asset? Yes. We have resources to treat it as an asset, and unfortunately, I walked in only when I heard comments about one question about, about how things have become commercialized, including cricket in our country. But one IPL game uh, profits is going to be sufficient to actually eradicate poverty to a large, large extent in our country. Now, that is a different issue, whether we'll be able to do it or not. But it's not a question of dearth of resources, it's a question of our approach. Now, can we do it? I think, yes, we can. And it can be done, but first let us get the actual status of what, uh, I mean, uh, what is the situation today. Look at these, uh, these uh, official statistics. The number of people living below poverty line in 1990 was 37.2% official uh, admissions. This is supposed to be brought down to 18.5 percent by 2015, but is expected to come down now to 22 percent. Present number of poor varies from 27 to 37 percent, depending on the various government-appointed official estimates, which I spoke to you earlier. Then the other point, there are 53.5 percent of underweight children below three years of age in the country in 1990. This was required to be reduced to 26.8% by 2015. This is now expected to come down by only 40%. The under five child mortality rate was 125 per thousand in 1990. This was to be reduced to 42 per thousand by 2015. It is now expected to reach only up to 70. In 1990, infant mortality was 80 per thousand. This was expected to be reduced to 26.7, but this is now expected to reach only 46. Maternal mortality was 437 